All right. Hi, guys. I feel like I'm being washed out here a little bit by the light. Tip it down. Oh, and I just sent it flying out of the holder. All right. Hold on. Hopefully, I'm going to be able to figure out an editing software here pretty soon, which would be nice. All right. Maybe that'll help. There. I don't feel quite as... Well, maybe I do feel quite as much. So whatever. Anyways, so this is going to be my take at Veda Day 3. I have totally, like, barely been going by the prompts for SSS Veda. So, like, yesterday I talked about autism awareness and um, sensory issues and stuff. So... Going forward, I'm trying to think of something really good to talk about. And I think what I'm going to talk about is why I do what I do. So, I kind of gave you the top five of why I was doing VEDA to begin with. This is the top five for why I do my business. Why I do my blog, my YouTube, all of that kind of stuff. So, number one, because I live it every single day as a mom to a child with ADHD, as a wife to a husband of ADHD. It is incredibly in us. It is what we do every single day. I personally, myself, have been diagnosed with depression and anxiety, and at one point I actually had a bipolar diagnosis, which we found out was not a true diagnosis. So we are in the stages of trying to figure out exactly what that means because it means that there was something that looked kind of like bipolar but wasn't so the question is what are we looking at um i have been told that it's possibly adhd i have read some stuff that's led me to sometimes think that maybe there was a little bit of asperger's in there um it just kind of it's one of those things where once i get done with all the stuff then hopefully i'll have an answer so, we live this stuff. We breathe it. It is who we are. Um, on top of that, reason number two, I have friends who live this. I have friends who live the in and out of doctor's appointments, in and out of therapy appointments, struggling to find a diagnosis, struggling to, to, to get answers. It's not even about a diagnosis for most of us. It's about, I want to know what the best therapies, the best solutions are to help my child. That is the bottom line for most of us. So it's, that's the second reason I do it. The third reason is because I need something to do. I need something you know, I need something to keep myself busy, and I have a hard time getting off of these kinds of topics because it's just, every time I turn around, I'm dealing with another quirk, another issue, another problem, another catastrophe, because let's face it, we have all four of those every day in our lives, and I'm dealing with it because of the ADHD, the sensory processing disorder, the you know, anxiety and depression that I face. So that's number three, because I need something to do and I need it to be something that is, you know, something that I'm interested in. And who is more interested in that kind of stuff than a mom who is trying to figure out how in the world to keep her family sane and in one roof? And that was me. It has been me, is still me some days. So, that is my number four reason, because I am that mom. I am that mom who just wants... I know that my normal is not what I thought it was going to be. It never will be. And I'm fine with that. But I will not just back down to this idea that I'm stuck to a life of therapies and, you know having to turn down going to places and doing things because of all of the issues and things that are going on. Like, that's not me. I'm not, I'm not about that. I am about, let's figure out ways that we can make this work. Let's figure out ways. Granted, we can't just pack up and go, say, to the park for a picnic. 
That's, that's not how our life works. But that doesn't mean that we never get to go to the park for a picnic. It just means that we have to do things a little differently. We have to plan a little bit more. We have to, you know, watch what we're doing when we're doing it. So if it's a bad day, then maybe we don't do it that day. Maybe we get everything ready and then we get up to the point and it's like, you know what? It's going to be a disaster if we go today. So maybe... We'll put all of this, put the food in the refrigerator for tomorrow. We'll put the blankets and stuff in the car. And then tomorrow we'll try it again. So, and then number five is because I genuinely, genuinely want to help people. I've seen so many people, as I said before, other parents, friends of ours that we've had, the parents have struggled. And it shouldn't be that way. Granted, there are no easy answers and every child is different. So for me to say, oh, X, Y, and Z worked for our kids. Well, that's nice, but it might not work for yours. And so I can't give you a definitive, try this, this will work. What I can do is I can say, okay, what, what is it that you're having issues with? So you tell me we're having issues with, you know, food. With getting our child to eat and so I can ramble you off a list of all the things that we tried and I can say this worked better when she was having this issue or that worked better when she was having that issue or whatever and we can process of elimination some of them and we can work together and try to come up with a plan that is what I'm about. I am about working together with people to help you figure out what is going to work for your child. That is where I'm at. And I feel like that is something that I wish would have been around when we were first starting this, going down this road. Um, we first had our child evaluated at 16 months. They told us she was fine. There was no um, delays, nothing like that. All good. So fast forward, I had her little sister when she was 18 months. At two years old, we were told she is not talking the way that she should. She needs to be seen. You need to get her in for speech evaluation. She had a speech and occupational um, therapist come. Basically told us that she had a lot of sensory issues, a lot of sensory needs, and she needed speech therapy. So we kind of, I've, I've been down this road, we had speech therapy that worked, we had occupational therapy that started to work, and then we had to change occupational therapists, and both, I've had two out of her three occupational therapists that were absolutely amazing. They were able to tell me exactly what was going on, how to work with her, how to deal with it, deal with it. We are also dealing with a spirited or strong-willed child on top of all of that. So she has a hard time letting us help her and a hard time with dealing with doing the things that need to be done so that she can feel good enough to do what she needs to do. I think that's one of the things, one of the hardest things about our situation is I know certain things that would help her, but it's getting her to do said things that's a little more difficult. So anyways, those are my five reasons. I am not going to talk your ear off anymore. I'm probably going to cut some of this out, hoping to find a decent, um, hopefully free video editing software sometime in the near future because I'd like to be able to put, you know, all the cute little custom doojabbies and everything on the, the thumbnails and everything like that. Anyways, again, super excited for VEDA. This is day number three. I will be back tomorrow with another video. I am Kimberly Cox from Journey to the New Normal, and I will talk to you tomorrow. Bye.